Okay, guys, it's 1130, so I thought we'd go ahead and get started. My name is Linda Craven. I'm the Community Health Coordinator at North Kansas City Hospital. Part of my job as a Community Health Coordinator is to identify needs out in the community and then try to create programs that meet those needs. So I have been asked many times about issues with weight management, obesity, and so luckily I found Jackie Roth, who's our speaker today, and they have created this four-week program. We are in week two of the four-week program, and this is, again, offered virtually as well as in person here at Gladstone Community Center. So without further ado, I will give you to Jackie Roth, and she will do your pre the presentation today. All right. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and take my mask off just so the viewers at home can see me well too. I am fully vaccinated. Um, but like Linda said, my name's Jackie. I work as a dietitian at the Total Weight Loss Center. I see familiar faces from last week. I um, was here with Dr. Kelly. And then I'll be here again next week as we do our behavioral part of it um, with our team psychologist, um, Dr. Harris. But today our focus is going to be on nutrition. So I've titled this kind of Revive Your Nutrition. The reason for that, a lot of us have heard about nutrition. We've been told certain things, we've tried different diets, but sometimes just needing that little extra pep in our step or that extra reminder to get going again. So kind of review from last week, you guys really dove in with Dr. Kelly and talked about what is medical weight loss. And it's that non-surgical approach that has the four different components to it, which is what this series is outlined to cover. So medication, we talked about that a lot last week. Going to be talking about nutrition today, and we'll actually talk about that again um, in two weeks. Uh, exercise will be in two weeks, and then next week, the behavior modification component. So Dr. Kelly last week talk, touched on this, that there's so many different factors that go into weight. Okay, it's not only exactly what you're eating. There are genetic components where mom, dad, grandma, grandpa have weight problems and related issues. Um, so it's passed down generation to generation. There are tons of environmental issues. Like she said last week, you know, we are not in a famine state. We are in that state of there's extra and we have quick access to it. And then different physiological factors too related to hormones that she dove into. So it can really be a tough struggle that as we lose weight, our bodies are smart and we're efficient and, and we adapt. Metabolism slows down. Those hormones start, um, I don't want to say getting out of whack, but they start kind of leveling in different directions. Um, and unfortunately, they level to increase your hunger and decrease the fullness. So you have factors working against you. So as we're over here kind of trying to decrease calories and increase our activity, we're just kind of outweighed a little bit. So what's really cool is when we add in that medical weight loss component to it, it levels out the playing field a little bit that we can kind of three on three to, to balance weight. So what we want to talk about is, well, how does the nutrition component, how can that go hand in hand with medication behavior modifications? And like I said, you've tried it all. I'm sure that you've been frustrated. You have tried calorie counting, um, you know, Weight Watchers, Slim for Life. There's a million different programs out there. The cabbage soup diet, the teacup diet. There are so many of them that we've tried. A lot of times patients will come in and they say, well, I've lost significant weight, but within three to four months, I regained that weight. So kind of that rebound type of fact or impact. And then different exercise regimens. Some of us have worked with personal trainers. We've tried the couch to 5K. We've tried incorporating everything we can. And it gets, you know, where you can get kind of fed up. And I always like this little cartoon and it says, fed up with how her diet is going. Charlene takes a more serious aim at her target weight. But what I really wanna to talk to you guys today is how nutrition, how what you eat and what you put into your body plays a profound impact on your overall health. So definitely can impact your body weight, but it also can reduce risk of chronic disease. It can reduce um, inflammation in the body and just help with um, the lifespan of aging from infancy all the way to older adulthood. Nutrition plays a crucial, crucial part in our overall health. So I wanna start with some basic nutrition tips that I'm sure a lot of you have heard before. 
So number one is we wanna work on not skipping meals. Aiming to eat three meals a day and then one to three snacks spaced in there evenly as needed. So I like my patients to try to eat every four to five hours. Now that doesn't mean I'm saying wake up in the middle of the night and set your alarm clock and eat overnight, but during waking hours, trying to eat um, every four to five hours, okay? We also wanna eat a variety of foods and colors. So raise your hand if you've heard eat the rainbow before. Most of us have, okay? And the reason for that, they have different vitamins. They have different minerals in them and different nutrition to give your body. Um, also, when you get those bright colors and greens and reds and oranges, a lot of those foods are also full with fiber. And we'll talk a little bit more about fiber in a second. And then I also wanna talk a little bit about monitoring portion sizes. And we'll talk more about this in two weeks, but we are in what I call portion distortion. Um, things in America, portions have gotten out of control. They've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. Our plates have gotten bigger, our cups have gotten bigger, and our portions when we go out and about have gotten bigger. Uh, anybody ever taught when you were younger the clean plate theory? Yep, okay. So that's something that habit continues over. So even though we might not be hungry, we have this large portion in front of us and it tastes good, it looks good, it smells good. We don't want to waste food. So it's kind of that habit from the past creeping in that we're eating out of other cues besides physical hunger. So I want you to really start working on getting in tune with your body. Am I eating because I am physically hungry or am I eating because of X, Y, Z going on? And we'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks here. So the grazing. So why do I have patients aim for more of like set meals? Typically when we start snacking and grazing, it's not on celery and carrots, okay? It's the chips, it's crackers, it's pretzels, different things like that. Ultimately what I find is that it leads to just extra calories throughout the day. If you'll think of it kind of like a gas tank, your stomach like a gas tank, if you're always keeping it about half a tank and never over on that full and satisfied, it's not getting those right hormones up to the brain to say, hey, red flag, I'm full quit eating. Okay, so if we have kind of a set meal, substantial amount that you get full, releases those hormones, and then we stay full through the day. Okay, and I remind patients to remember all those BLTs throughout the day, the bites, the licks, and the taste. Okay, anybody been to Weight Watchers before and heard that one? Yep. They all add up. So things that we don't really think about, it's just a little bit here, a little bit there, but it really can make a big difference throughout the day when we're constantly doing this. So I do recommend to avoid and limit that munching, grazing, snacking throughout the day. All right, so what are we supposed to be doing? So where are our, where are calories coming from? We have three main groups in our diet where we're getting calories from, and that is protein, fats, and carbohydrates. So where do we find protein from? So when you think protein, I want you to mostly think your animal-based or meat-based sources. Chicken, fish, turkey, beef, pork. Very, very important for the body. They are involved if you ever get injured. Protein's involved with healing. Protein is involved with different hormones and enzymes in the body. And protein's also a big part of our immune system. So when you get sick, protein helps your body heal and re repair. Um, muscle mass too. So as you are working to kind of build muscle through exercise, protein's a big part of that. Where do we find fats? So fats, think um, oils, olive oil, um, canola oil, coconut oil, butters, margarines, avocados, nuts, and seeds. So in the past, and I think Dr. Kelly touched on this last week, they used to say low fat, low fat, cut them all out. Well, they don't say that anymore, okay? Things have changed a little bit. I will encourage you throughout the course of today to eat fats, get those good healthy fats that are helping to protect the body, okay? Good healthy fats like nuts and seeds and avocado, they are brain protective, they are heart protective, and they help keep you fuller longer, which is what we want. Okay, and then our last one, carbohydrates. Breads, pastas, rices, cereals, crackers, etc. So while each of these food groups has an important role in the body and an important component, 
None of them need to be eliminated. None of them need to be cut out. But the important part today for the kind of the medical weight loss side of stuff that I want you to start focusing on is really starting to watch and limit our carbohydrate intake. Starting to switch our focus a little bit and look more at the protein and produce. So why do we wanna do this? Well, first things first, this is typically the food group that we are prone to maybe overeating or over consuming. The casseroles, the pastas, the breads, the yogurts, the fruit, the granola, we are a very carbohydrate loving country. Okay, this is typically the food group we go through or go to the most. Um, carb also stimulates insulin production. Okay, if you remember from last week that insulin is what is cueing your body to store fat. So if we can start to decrease our carbohydrate intake, that's gonna help decrease our insulin level and you're gonna be able to burn more of your fat stores. Okay, so lower carb, lower insulin, burn more fat. That's what we wanna to try to accomplish. So where do we find these carbohydrates? A lot of our favorite foods, breads, pastas, rices, cereals, crackers, tortillas, milk and yogurt actually fall into this group. Fruits and juices actually fall into this group as well. Uh, snacks, cookies, cakes, ice creams, candies, that is all from the carbohydrate group. So who sees a few of their favorite foods up there? Most of us, yeah, most of us are going to this group. Want you to know that carbohydrates also include vegetables. Okay, but within that veggie group, they're kind of divided into two different categories. Starchy veggies, non-starchy veggies. Okay, our three starchy veggies, typically our favorites, corn, peas, potatoes. Okay, so the three starchy vegetables, corn, peas, potatoes. Often what I find if a patient comes in, they say, well, dinner is a meat, a potato, and a veggie. A lot of times that veggie is corn or peas. So what that means is we're doubling up on that starchy side. What I want you to start going more for is the non-starchy vegetables. So what is the non-starchy? Well, pretty much anything besides corn, peas, potatoes. Lettuce, tomato, onion, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, cucumber, all those veggies are gonna count as the non-starchy. Very little carbohydrate in them. I typically tell my patients, you don't need to count them unless you're gonna eat a whole bag of baby carrots, but a small serving here and there, I say, don't sweat the small stuff. They are full of fiber, they are full of vitamins, they're full of minerals, and they are low carbohydrate. Okay. Yep, they would be the non-starchy then, Yep. Yep, all those peppers, like the little sweet peppers that come in the bag, the red, the yellow, the green, all of those would. Any other questions so far? Okay, so how many of these carbohydrates am I supposed to consume a day? So if you are someone with diabetes, um, what the kind of recommendations from the American Diabetes Association typically give is about 45 grams of carbohydrate per meal. For the medical weight loss side, that is a lot. It is a lot of carbohydrate to be consuming. So what we typically do with our patients, we do about 100 grams of carbohydrate or less per day. Okay, so 100 grams of carbohydrate or less per day. Now, this isn't something that I'm like, eat them all at once if you want to. The best thing that we can do is kind of space them equally throughout the day. Um, I don't want you to eat no carbohydrate for breakfast, for lunch, and save all 100 for dinner. The more that you'll kind of equally space them today, I think you'll be more satisfied and your body handles that smaller dose better. So how do you determine this? So first place that you can look is your nutrition label. Anybody familiar with the nutrition labels? Yep. There's a lot of information on them. You don't need to look at the percents on the side. I honestly just pretend they're not even there. Don't need to peek at them. I want you to start looking at serving size first 
because with all that information on the label, it's based on the serving. You double that serving size, you double all the info. You triple it, you triple the info. And then I want you to start looking at total carb. Okay, the fiber and sugar and added sugar, they are already included in the total carbohydrate. So you just need to look right at grams. So reminder, I'm gonna go back a slide. 100 grams or less per day is a good starting point. So let's take a peek at how many this one has. So the serving size, two thirds of the cup, and it has 37 grams of carbohydrate. So there's over a third of your day intake of carbohydrate from two thirds of a cup of this. Okay. What else does, you know, what servings do they look like? So here's a good chart that I want to go through some of these. And I think it'll be guys, kind of eye opening. Take you down to the garage for me? Or Woo! I have a dolly down there if that would help. Oh, this is very Are you sure? Yeah, guys, okay. Thanks for joining. That would be wonderful. Uh, if you're at home, if you wouldn't mind to mute your um, microphone for me, we would appreciate it. <laughs> Perfect. So again, if you're at home, if you wouldn't mind to mute your microphones for us, we're just hearing a little bit of background noise. Okay, so here we go. So what does 15 grams of carbohydrate look like? So one slice of bread. So if you had one slice of toast for breakfast, there's 15 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, you made an egg sandwich and had two. Well, there's 30 grams of carbohydrate right there. Okay, I baked potato, so a small baked potato. If you'll think about this little computer mouse up here, about this size baked potato, that's roughly close to 30 grams of carbohydrate right there. When's the last time you've seen a baked potato this small? Okay, remember we talked about portion distortion? Things are getting bigger. So you go out to a restaurant or even at home and do a baked potato, you'd easily, easily be 60 grams of carbohydrate from the potato. Um, a third of a cup of pasta or rice. Okay, a fistful, so my fist, that's a whole cup. So visualize a third of that. Okay, when's the last time that your spaghetti bowl had that small amount of pasta? Portion distortion. Okay, a bagel. You go to Panera or Einstein. Those are roughly 60 grams of carbohydrate. So it's a fourth of a bagel. And most of us don't cut the bagel into fourths. We eat the whole bagel. It's 15. But the whole bagel, we're close to 60. Pancakes. Think about a CD. Anybody use CDs still? I still have some. Okay, a CD size of a pancake. There's 15 grams. Okay, do they come that small at Corner Cafe? Typically no. Okay, portion distortion again. Um, fruit, apples, bananas, pears. So fruit's great for you. It does have fiber, it's full of vitamins, it's full of minerals but it has a lot of natural sugar, which is carbohydrate. So an apple, banana, or pear, they are roughly 30 grams of carbohydrate. So you go and buy like a Honeycrisp or Red Delicious, anything like that, safely count that as 30. If you buy a bag of apples, the smaller ones, those can be closer to 50. Okay, so you have a banana and a slice of toast for breakfast. So the banana is 30, your slice of toast is 15. There's 45 grams of carbohydrate already. One of your lower carbohydrate fruits is actually berries, blackberries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, um, a whole cup of those. So a whole cup. And if you think about when you buy raspberries, the little containers, um, that's about 15 grams of carbohydrate. Dried fruit, so raisins, craisins, anything like that. Be careful with them. Serving size is only two tablespoons. So if you eat a little box of raisins, those are roughly 30 grams of carbohydrate. Um, containers of yogurt, if you'll get like the non-fat, um, no sugar added ones, they're about 15 grams. But if you were just to go pick up a container of store brand or Yoplait, just regular yogurt, 
minimum would be about 30 grams of carbohydrate. Milk, um, one cup of milk. So think of that if you have kids, grandkids at home, the little cups, that's about eight ounces. Who's drinking cups at home or that small now? Most of them are big. So you fill up just a glass of milk with breakfast, you're probably looking at 45 to 60 grams of carbohydrate. Okay, and then juice, half a cup of juice, four ounces. That is 15 grams of carbohydrate. And again, most of us pour just a normal size glass. So it's really eye-opening when you start looking at, well, what is carbohydrate? How much carbohydrates in the food I eat? It's pretty easy to see how we can be over-consuming that carbohydrate. And it leaves you thinking, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? What do I eat now? We want you to start switching your focus to protein and produce. Okay, the first question I ask my patients to start looking at is looking at your plate in the morning and asking yourself, what am I eating besides carbohydrate? Okay, what am I eating besides carbohydrate? Because example of kind of a standard meal now. So breakfast, maybe we do cereal and milk. I'm sorry. Okay, now I know. Any escalation? Okay. Hey guys, if you're at home, would you mind to mute yes, your um, speaker or your microphone for me? Um, Is there a way to mute people at home? Nobody mentioned anything about it, so should it come with it? Should it? Shouldn't have been in the box. It wasn't. Guys. So, so what do I do? That's right here. I'll take. I think the old installation should work. Yes. There we go. Did I get everybody. Yep. There we go. Sorry, Jack. That's okay. Okay. So a breakfast. Maybe we have cereal and milk. Carb and carb. We have oatmeal and fruit. Again, carb and carb. Um, yogurt and fruit, carb and carb, Com pumpkin spice latte, lots of carb. Okay, those are easily going to be 60 to 70. And then we think about dinner. There we go. Spaghetti and garlic bread. Okay, you get the point. It's all carbohydrate. So what I want you to really do is look at that plate. What am I eating besides carbohydrate? Do I have a protein source there? Okay, remember, those protein sources are not stimulating that insulin production. They're not causing that fat storage. Proteins are also, they're denser and they're heavy. They help keep you fuller longer. I like to explain carbohydrates, especially the one like white breads, white pastas, white rices. Think of them almost as pre-digested. They don't take your body very long to break down. You, you digest those babies pretty quick. So then what happens is you get full, but then you're hungry again in a couple hours. Okay, so it goes through your system quick. Your blood sugar goes straight up, then straight back down, and we're ready to eat again. Then we get into that snacking, grazing, munching throughout the day schedule. So proteins are good at helping you stay fuller longer. And the goal, and it doesn't have to be overnight, I don't expect you to flip a 360, but your goal would be that each meal, each snack, has a good lean protein source. Okay, so which protein sources? Well, there's lots of great proteins. Okay, your chicken, your fish, your turkey, beef, pork. They used to say Johnny eggs, they don't say that anymore. If you like eggs, go for it. They are A-OK -okay to eat, the whole egg is. Um, your meats are going to be your best, highest quality um, protein option. Things like your nuts and your seeds and your beans, they definitely have protein in them, but they also fall in as either a carbohydrate or a fat source. So I call them kind of our combo foods. When you're picking protein, I like to say the more feet it has, the more bad fat it has. So fish, no feet. Turkey chicken, two. Pigs and cows, four. So trying to pick more chicken, fish, and turkey is going to be a good option. Um, 
choosing leaner cooking methods too. Okay, I'm not talking about frying and breading and all that type stuff, but doing more grilled meats, um, taking the skin off of it. Um, white meat over dark meat has a little bit less fat in it. Um, and then if you do your beef and pork, choosing rounds and loins, sirloin, tenderloin, pork loin, round steak, those are all a little bit leaner cuts. Now, the more processed meats, it's something, you know, don't do an abundance of it. Uh, but if you wanted, you know, slices of ham or turkey, sausage, um, bacon, things like that, they can be incorporated. I do encourage you to flip that label around and look at it. A lot of those products, you would be shocked that they put sugar into them. So like you're not in your head, you've seen it. Bacon, especially in sausages, are one that they do put a lot of added sugar into those. So flip the label around and kind of compare those and looking for that added sugar. Okay, produce. Look at all these options. Peppers, broccoli, tomatoes, cucumbers. The possibilities are endless. So again, it's eating the rainbow. So maybe for snacks, it's getting those little bell peppers. Okay, getting the little cucumbers, getting the cherry tomatoes. Maybe we swap the bread and do a lettuce wrap. Okay, for breakfast, maybe on the weekend prepping a veggie omelet. Um, you can do a scramble and put peppers and onions and mushrooms and then scrambled eggs so you have it ready for the week. You know, dinner, fajita. Okay, put that on top of lettuce or put that on top of spinach instead of wrapping it in a tortilla and then having rice and beans on the side. Because the tortilla, the rice, the beans, what group is that going to be? Yeah, those are all of our carbohydrates. So again, it doesn't mean they're bad. It doesn't mean to never have them. We just really want to start limiting them and saying, what do I have here besides carbohydrate? Anybody have any ideas of meals that you have at home that you kind of swapped this for that to decrease carbohydrates a little bit? Yeah, veggies. Veggies? Good. What all are you doing? Uh, for example, I, wait, I measure uh, my veggies in a half, half okay. cup, and I know it says uh, half cup cooked, <laughs> I don't put it back in the cup and then eat it, I just hey, okay. do half the cup, Go for half, it, girl. and then throw it in the pan, but I mentioned the tablespoon uh -huh. of, of avocado oil, okay. and uh, I changed it from uh, kale, what was it, canola oil. Okay. So I swapped it to avocado. Yeah, good for you. Sometimes I do, um, instead of butter, because <laughs> I was making it with butter, um, my Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And I don't add the salt, garlic salt anymore. I squeeze fresh um, lime juice and like the tart. Nice, juice. good. And I take the fresh cloves of garlic and I put a little bit on it. I grate it. And I have a little grater about this big. It's handheld, so and it's pretty. So I'm trying to make things fun. Yeah, good for you. I think that's a big part of it is having fun in the kitchen too, making yeah. it enjoyable again and not seeing it as a chore and something we have to do, but something that we get to do. You get to, you know, make meals and nourish your body. Um, cauliflower rice. Does anybody try that? Yeah. What are your thoughts? I like it. I like I bought some. You know, um, I've had some bad, like, but um, then I've had, like, the ones that they mix with little cheese. Yeah, uh-huh. Good. And I think the market is starting to kind of catch on, and there's lots of new alternatives that you can do. Um, the cauliflower rice, you can get in steamable bags in the frozen section. You can get it fresh in the produce section. Um, zucchini noodles, I've seen them at hy V that are already shredded into the, the zucchini noodle for you. So I do think the market's starting to catch up with it a little bit um, to see some of those lower carbohydrate options and incorporating more vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite recipes, I do a buffalo chicken spaghetti squash. Um, we eat it pretty frequently, yeah. And I did bring some, oh, go ahead. There's also cauliflower mashed potatoes. Yeah. Has anybody tasted that? I have not, but um, I've heard it's really good. 
Yeah, there's some great substitutes. I did bring some sample menus in the back that we use at a total weight loss center. I brought in for the 50 grams of carbohydrate a day for 75 and 400. Some of the meals are the same, but it lets you kind of see, you know, if you start at 100, we're having some weight loss and maybe it stalls a little bit and you want to go down to the 75, it'll show you what to kind of swap in and out or what to look at cutting or decreasing to lower that carbohydrate. And I think it'll be a good example for you of just balancing different meals, incorporating some different vegetables in there, and hopefully just give you some different ideas of things to incorporate. So if you didn't pick some up before class, make sure to grab those in the back um, before you leave. There should be plenty for everybody. Um, snack combos. So I like to say try not to eat a naked carbohydrate. So what that means is try not to eat the carbohydrate by itself. Um, putting either a good lean protein with it or putting a good healthy fat with it. So if you're going to have an apple instead of just the apple, well, let's fill up. Maybe you have an egg with it. Maybe you have a cheese stick with it. Maybe you put peanut butter on top of it. Um, yogurt, instead of putting granola on the yogurt, dicing up um, some almonds or some kind of nut or seed to mix that in for a little bit of crunch with it. Um, if you want veggies, you know, dip those in hummus. Or I have a lot of my patients get plain Greek yogurt and then a ranch seasoning packet and stir that up for a vegetable dip. And then I had anybody like cottage cheese and tomatoes. It's one of my favorites. So I included that one. Um, you know, a lot of people do cottage cheese and pineapple or fruit, but look into that vegetable option as well to kind of mix and match. So, you know, it's a lot. I think when you are looking to lose weight and do medical weight loss, it's a big lifestyle change. It's, it's a new way of looking at things. It's a new way of eating in our very kind of American standardized high carbohydrate diet. But we really, really see when patients start decreasing that and we start filling up on different food groups, it's great for the body. I think a lot of people, it reduces pain because carbohydrates are known to cause inflammation. It definitely helps with weight loss. It helps with blood sugar control and can just make, you know, the benefits are huge of it. So I think remind yourself, it is hard and it's difficult to make changes, but something that you can definitely do. Next, no, so in two weeks, um, Becky, our dietitian, will be here and talking about the exercise component. So that'll be on the 26th. But knowing that exercise, you know, Dr. Kelly talked about, it plays a big role. Um, mental health as well as weight loss. So aiming for about that 150 minutes of exercise per week. And when Becky's here, she'll give you lots of ideas of how to incorporate that and what it can look like throughout the week. So with that being said, I want to open it for questions. Yes. Yep. Talk about 100 grams of carbs. Uh-huh. What about the other? For the different protein, so protein. So protein, what we typically do is per person based on body weight, and typically one point two to one point five grams of protein per ideal body weight. So I can help you calculate that after if you want to. Yep, we do it based on ideal body weight, not your current body weight is typically what we do. So that one's a little bit more fine-tuned. Carbohydrate or fat, typically 60 to 65 grams of fat per day is consistent with the American Heart Association. I'm a little bit more lenient on those. If you're incorporating good, healthy fats, I would much rather you do that than having extra pretzels or chips or cookies or different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good question. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, I was wondering about non-calories. Are they good to do or are some better than others? No, so if you want to use them, definitely you can. I mean, I'm definitely not going to say to use a bag of Splenda a day, but if you're someone who typically sweetens tea, coffee, or whatnot with real sugar, subbing in Splenda equal Truvia Stevia can be fine to do. Yep. Not one that's better for tea. Oh, they market stevia and truvia as a little bit less processed, a little bit more natural. But my thought is use the one that you preference and that you are willing to use and will be consistent with using in place of sugar. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's all kinds of them. I think keep in mind, you know, things like agave nectar and different stuff, they're really the same, or honey, they are, you know, teaspoon for teaspoon, the same carbohydrate content as sugar. So those don't make good alternatives. But if you want to do the Splenda, Truvia, Stevia, A okay? Good question. If you don't eat the number of like you're below it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. So I think that's okay. I typically, you know, 50 to 100 within that range. I don't want you to have the mindset of, well, she said I could have 100, so I'm going to go for 25. Okay, it's not that case. But I think most of you, if you just took your normal day intake right now, would be pretty blown away at how much carbohydrate we're consuming. So when you start to cut it down to that 175 is a pretty significant change. Mm -hmm. So I would go right, right in that range. Um, if and when you were to meet with Dr. Kelly, sometimes based on different um, medical conditions, she'll go down closer to the 75 or 50. But I think starting around the 100 is a great starting place for most of us. Yep. I find uh, with the help of the weight loss plan, um, it guides me to measure and to really look at what I was eating with my husband. Mm -hmm. Like I started Monday and I was eating so much different than he would prepare our dinners mm -hmm. all the time. And it was like a potato soup with ham and it was a uh, uh, chicken. Uh, what is it? Chicken salad with all the good stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I can't have that, you know? yeah like, it's pretty eye opening once you step back and look at it. And a lot yeah. of people, food and carbs are your love language. So, you know, something happy goes on and you get a promotion or birthday. Here's cake, here's cookies, let's celebrate. Yeah. And on the opposite, you know, we experience sorrow or a funeral and it's here's casseroles and here's food, we're sorry, that we're pretty centered around food as a coping mechanism and a big part of life. So it does really encourage you and your significant other and different relationships you have to step back and kind of say, you know, what do we enjoy together outside of food? What are some new hobbies that we can pick up? Or what are some changes we can make together as a family and as a couple to change the way that we eat and, and live together? Okay, any other questions, concerns? I have a question though. Yeah. Like the cauliflower crust and pizza. Does that make it? Well, those can be a little tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they can be tricky. If you're buying one that's pre made, turn the label around and peek at that mm -hmm. because they do typically add flowers into them to get them to, yeah, bind them together. Some will use almond flour, which is a little bit less carbohydrate. But if they're using just regular flour, it can still be a pretty significant amount of carb. Um, but getting like the thinner crust, definitely. Um, and I encourage you look at, you know, zucchini on top of, put your pizza toppings on top of zucchini. Get a big portobello mushroom if you like mushrooms and put your, your sauce and your pepperonis and your, you know, all the pizza toppings on top of that and grill it. I'm just looking at some alternatives too. But there's also going to be times where you really want the pizza. Have a slice of the pizza, count it in, and move on. Okay, don't let a snowball effect happen that, oh, I had pizza today, so I'm going to get donuts tomorrow, and I'm going to swing by McDonald's for lunch. Don't let that vicious cycle happen. I think have it, enjoy it. Um, we're thinking the big picture here, and then move on with it and get back on track. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming. I hope it was good information. Again, next week, Dr. Harris, our clinic psychiatrist or psychologist, will be here talking about tips and tidbits for breaking old habits. And I do think she mentioned she has a couple giveaways, so you might want to come.